Patrick, just sort of take us through the last couple of days with you and your hockey operations staff and, and the conversations you had and what led to this point now past the deadline. Yeah, um, we uh, talked uh, a lot to other teams uh, where players were available um, leading up to uh, a couple hours ago here today. Uh, looking at our team and where we are, um, sitting here today with 89 points with the group we have here, uh, the pickup we did during the year, uh, Lafferty, Sadorov, and, and Lindholm, we felt that we strengthened our team uh, and, and it played uh, really well hockey. Uh, just coming out over the last week here uh, on the road trip, giving up three goals, back to playing to our staples, playing to our standards, uh, getting Susie back, uh, getting Dakota Yasha back here, in 10 days, two weeks, we felt that, that the team we have um, is good enough to compete here. I uh, also said uh, several times that I'm very pleased with the younger players in Abbotsford. Uh, with the injuries we had, we've been able to give Baines uh, some games. We've been able to give put Colson games and Linus Carlson. And those guys have shown that uh, they're good uh, uh, potential good NHL players. Some of them are, are closer than others, but uh, we felt uh, we felt really good. I think Jim earlier in the year talked about the risks of making moves and the risks of not making moves and having to weigh everything. How much did that perspective come into the picture, especially with the assets you'd already given up in some of those previous trades? Yeah, I, I think that's something we're always uh, looking into. And, and for us, and I said it before, it's just not... I, I, I'm actually... <laughs> trying to work every day, uh, not just for the last day here. Um, and I think that's where we always trying to be ahead of things. And, and even getting players in earlier so they have a chance to adjust. And we, we felt when we, uh, going back to before the, we started the season with Laffer to get some more speed in, uh, looking when we, we, we needed Sadorov, we were a little bit banged up there. Uh, and being an LTR as well, we need to, Move, in order to facilitate a trade for us, we need to move player, a player out to, to get a player in. So obviously that's, that's a tougher situation than uh, a cure in cap space during the year. So, uh, Patrick, we, you mentioned a couple of forwards that have come up from Abbotsford and got a chance to play, but in the playoffs, you're likely going to need some depth on defense. What are you seeing down in Abbotsford uh, for some defensemen that might be able to step up in that role? Yeah, I think it was a good uh, step in the right direction here for Brees. I'm very happy for him. He worked hard during the whole year, and, and for him to uh, get medical cleared and be assigned uh, uh, to start playing down there. I think uh, guys like uh, Jet Wu, uh, McCord, uh, Philip Johansson, they all improved during the year. Uh, we have good depth when we're healthy up here, but we know a Playoff is a different animal. You need depth. And, and those guys have showed that they're capable uh, to play games. And after all the trades you've made throughout the season, was today a little bit difficult to, to not make one for you? Yeah, I guess you need another uh, partner in order to make a deal. And, and uh, as I said, we were, in, uh, we were in talking to teams that uh, made uh, their players available. Uh, but uh, sometimes uh, the fit is not there. Um, and uh, as I said, I didn't want to risk, and I, I, I feel that the group we have here and the team we have here uh, have played so well together, and they continue to find ways to, to win games and continue to improve. So uh, credit to the players. Uh, Patrick, two of the teams that made some of the biggest and boldest moves are chasing you in the Pacific Division, you know, Edmonton and, and Las Vegas. How much harder do you think the division is to win or get out of in the playoffs now than it was a week ago? Oh, absolutely. Way, way harder. Uh, and we all know that those teams were good to, to coming in there, too. Um, I think uh, the, the, the West uh, have shown that uh, there is several teams that are capable to competing for a cup this year. And uh, as we all said, it's just, every game is just going to get harder. That's the way it is. And I think it's a great... Uh, learning experience for our young group here where um, looking at the roster, is a, there is not a lot of, of playoff experience. So every big game here in March, are, have you seen the growth in the players going through adversity, 
coming into this tough week and being able to only give up three goals on the road, uh, I, see, I think that says a lot about the players and, and the coaches, how they work. So, and this is maybe a question that we'll ask Rick uh, tomorrow, but when the teams chasing you have made those kind of moves, what is the message to your team to just believe in, in where you are? Or how, do you, how do you kind of counter that mindset that you know, they've made big changes and we're the same team that we were? Yeah, but as I said, I, I'm trying to uh, be ahead of things and trying to make the changes when it's needed and bringing in players earlier to adjust. Um, we all know that it's going to take time for the adjustment, and some might, might not find the chemistry or not. That being said, we had tremendous respect for the, the, the other teams in our division. It's Nothing has really changed. We know how hard it is. We know how they played. Uh, we know how we need to play in order to have success, and, and I know the coaches are working on that to focus on, on our game and our way of hockey to play to be successful and and again we've shown it up to this point uh are we pleased or satisfied not not at all i think there is another level and i think our players are learning that this as i said going through the adversity here so uh, i'm excited for the game tomorrow patrick there was a thought coming into the last few days that this might be a buyer's market there was a lot of wingers available and some went at, at reasonable prices. A, a guy like Toffoli certainly comes to mind in this market. How involved were you on some of those potential players and was the bigger issue cap space or just not wanting to part with assets? Uh, as I said, we were involved in, in most of the players that, that were available. Um, I don't know what you're referring to a lot. Uh, um, I don't think there was a lot of, of quality players uh, available. And I think, as I said, uh, the LTIR, like, yeah, the cap space is important, but we, when we set a roster in, in, in October, that's the number we have to work with. And as I said, the previous deals have been players going out and players are coming in. And that's the world we, we're operating in. Um, it was definitely a, a, a big demand and ask for our younger players. And I didn't feel that uh, in where we are, in the position where we are, that I wanted to give up the Willinder, Lekimaki, Patterson, Radis, uh, Sasson, Baines, but Cole, like those are the guys of the future here. And, and, and we feel strongly about those young players. I know that Jim said in the last couple of days that um, top six forward was an area of need. And that's six weeks after Lindholm has been brought here. Um, how do you address that over, over the course of the next few weeks before the playoffs and into the playoffs? Is there anything internally you can do, or are you just hoping certain guys hit a different level? Yeah, I think that's where the coaches are working with the players. It's, uh, you know, uh, as I said, we're going through a slump. We're going through adversity and uh, finding ways to get out of it. And, and uh, I know the coaches are, are every day working on, on the individuals, uh, to, uh, to get to the next level. But again, being pleased with uh, watching Baines coming up here for games, watching Put Colts and how he has uh, improved and, and uh, worked on the things that we asked him to work on. So those guys uh, will definitely be in the mix here uh, going down the stretch and competing for spots. Patrick, signing Elias last week, did that change your planning for this week, knowing that now you sort of have a core set for several years as opposed to not knowing that you know what your team was going to look like beyond this year yeah uh it definitely did i mean uh definitely f with a projection of our of our roster moving forward we know we're going to have some some really good players on our team for the next at least eight years uh but that being said that's where um, we know that there were a couple of, of intriguing players available and we were in in those discussions and and for whatever reason they didn't end up here but we also weren't willing with parting ways with future assets or 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 as i said the young players that we have that we believe in can come in and help us here over the next couple of years and then phil kessel you brought in you took a look at him in the end you didn't sign him what light can you shed on on how that process went 
I think Phil is a great person and a well-respected player. Um, what he has done in the league, a three-time cup winner, uh, wanted to come back to play. And uh, as I said, uh, with with being an LTIR, uh, roster complications and, and uh, um, how we want to play, uh, unfortunately, uh, at this point, it wasn't a fit for us. Patrick, given all of the moves you've made, and not just the in-season ones with Zadorov and um, Lindholm, but dating back even to Hironik and to Smith and on and on, did you feel it was important to hang on to what futures, what draft picks that you have, especially given how marketable prospect capital seem to be at the deadline? Yes, um, definitely. And, and also... Um, for, for us, uh, we already parted ways with a lot of draft picks and, and leading up to this point. And as I said, we, we're sitting here with 89 points and, and the players that have been on the roster and on the team um, leading up to this point have done a, a really good job and they deserve to, to finish off here. Um, but again, was it any chance for us to improve with a, with a reasonable cost and not, not uh, setting the future uh, Back, uh, we definitely would have, you know, look at it, but but unfortunately, uh, it didn't work this time. I know you can't specifically discuss players on other teams or situations that may have cropped up over the last couple of weeks, but did the experience of bidding on some of the players that went earlier in the process, whether it was earlier this week or the week prior, impact you at all in deciding to be maybe a little bit more conservative based on the prices paid and what you'd sort of learned about how your own system was rated? I think we, we uh, over the la- I would say over the last couple of weeks, identified uh, uh, areas on our roster that, that, if anything, to improve on. I think we had that, uh, the feeling there. I think we, we played a couple of players uh, higher up in the lineups than, than what we... Uh, what we signed them for, but they've been, they've been great. Uh, so if there was any ways to strengthen or as Jim pointed out, top six, uh, absolutely. That, that, that would be an area, uh, saying that going through the, the tough stretch here with losing games and not being able to score, um, Hopefully we can find ways and hopefully we can build guys back up. And uh, as I said, uh, Dakota, when he's coming back, we felt that that was a, a positive injection again to our team. Patrick, you sent Vasily down this morning. I think that has to do with making him eligible for the AHL playoffs. What's the plan now for him? He looked comfortable in the three games that he played. Is he going to be back up and in the lineup tomorrow night? Yes, he's coming back up here. Uh, very pleased. And I think that's... The one thing that, that Hoglander learned from, from us last year, the, the partnership and the trust factor that we're doing this to help the players long-term um, NHL career. And, and with, with pods, it's, it's not just the points what we're looking for. It's uh, as talk is talking about all the time, the wall plays, winning battles, getting the puck deep, the, the details of the games. And I've been really impressed with, with uh, Put Colson since he came up here and played those games on the road trip. I talked to Rick about 10 days ago, and he had then sort of expressed that there had been a dip in the performance of the fourth line. And he talked about wanting a fourth line with identity. And I know DJ Giuseppe scored last night, but that's kind of been the outlier uh, in terms of providing offense, how closely did you guys look at altering the composition of your fourth line? And since you didn't make moves, what do you see as the identity of the group that you've got moving forward down the stretch and into the playoffs? Yeah, you're right. I think that's something we we, we definitely looked at and uh, has been looking at the whole year. Um, I think you could say that the fourth line was, was really good. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Hoglander graduated out of the fourth line. So I think he was a big part of the fourth line where they were productive and scored. Um, and I think with the, with the injuries of, of Dakota has moved other players around. Uh, I still think uh, having uh, Teddy Bluger as your fourth line center is a luxury. Uh, and, and we all know that the matchups and 
what the center position does for a winning team is important, and that, that's um, that's where we now, you know, hopefully can can find that identity again of being hard to play against, play with speed. And I think that that line here over the last stretch of games with uh, Teddy, uh, Sam Lafferty, and Digiuseppe have played uh, played pretty good. I know you guys don't make rash decisions based on short term results, um, but it, did the last three games? impact your decision making at all because I know it was a little bit tougher before that did this allow you to just be calm and not overreact no I think we we again going back to when this season started we want to see the progress of the players and and yeah you're going through adversity and you're trying to find uh, how we or how I can help the coaches uh, provide a better lineup every night and and uh we uh, we talk into other teams and seeing what's what's available or not, and I I don't think that's really changed uh, the, their performance this week. Uh, I think I still think that that if there was a player available uh, for the right price, we would definitely have uh, jumped in there. Was it tough though to take a measured approach? I think I read that Jim has been involved in thirty four trades on deadline day you guys are an aggressive group by nature and you don't often get these years where everybody's healthy and people are playing at such a high level was it tough to just be measured well I think you always and, and I think that's what I've learned from Jim you always want to be ahead of things and and part of it is that uh, the discussions that I have with my staff and that I have with Jim and the coaches every day would allow us to quickly get into a trade if it happens and and uh, so, so was it with, um, with uh, Sadorov when we were able to pick him up. It was a quick one there. Um, yeah, I, again, I, I think this is a balance of, of today, uh, today's Vancouver Canucks and uh, next year's and the following year's Vancouver Canucks. And I think this is a process that we started uh, getting in here two years ago and uh, we're not finished, uh, we're not satisfied. We're always trying to... Uh, to get better and improve, and uh, uh, would I like to have another player here today? Uh, yeah, sure. You talked about with your salary cap situation, needing to make kind of player for player trades previously in the season. Did that aspect of the trade deadline increase the prices for you in a way that you weren't comfortable with? Perhaps needing to include a, a contract going back or including a third team to get salary retention? Uh, it definitely made it uh, more complicated by bringing in players with salary. That means that you're going to take out the player with salary uh, or, or pay a, a, a third party. Yes. There were a lot of trade rumors that went around uh, leading into the deadline. Um, how do you think that maybe impacted your roster, the players that maybe were named in, in those rumors, and is that something that you had to consider as you were going into the deadline? Yeah, I feel bad for, for uh, those players' names out there. I, I don't think that's uh, the respect or integrity of the league. And, and sometimes it's just uh, very unfortunate that it's a guessing game. Um, I, I Yeah, it, it's not fair. Patrick, you uh, chatted a little bit about how uh, teams like uh, loading up like Vegas and Edmonton will make this a, a tougher division to play against. When you see some of those deals uh, that Vegas and Edmonton and Winnipeg have made, what goes through your mind as a GM in the same division? Well, it doesn't get it easier, uh, that's for sure. But it also uh, shows that uh, you, you need to build up your kind of assets pools and and. and you know, picks or, or draft picks. And I think that's where we have started to do here and, and feeling more confident what we have in Abbotsford or, or unsigned players. And it also shows what the, the other teams around the league feels about our younger players. I mean, yeah, I could have parted ways with, with several younger players to get more established players in here if there was any salary cap restrictions but I, I we're we're excited about the young players that are uh, getting closer to filling filling or spot filling spots on the roster here uh, moving forward now that the deadline's passed how are you feeling about this team as you gear up for playoffs 
Well, we're not there. We were gearing up for a, for a big week here, a big, gearing up for a big test against Winnipeg. Um, hopefully we learned something from last game when we played them. Uh, I know the players are having a day off today and, and uh, a well-deserved one after a tough, uh, tough week here. But I know the coaches are in here working hard and I know that uh, they're going to have the team prepared for playing tomorrow and that's, that's our focus. Thank you.